so who is using Atos from here? Okay, one, two, very good. The new feature Centrex, but before we will talk about it, I will tell you how, what's the current state of the centration. So currently we can import data from Sirius, Sirius Plus, MS and uh, Pyramis. So based on this data, this data are exported on the stick into the laser. And then we are getting a sign where to center the treatment. So then first we need to adjust the eye with the joystick with the bed. We touch the PI and then we gently ask the patient to move to look to the left, to the right, up and down. Once when we find the perfect position, actually when this cross is here right in the, in the, in the center, another cross appears, then we are in the optimum. But all of us, we know that we have some astigmatic eyes or some differently or specially or individual built eyes. When you apply vacuum, the eye moves or slips down and we are losing the perfect centration. So what we do in such a case or what I do in such a case, if it's just a little bit, then I let it go and we continue because we know if it's less than 0.3 millimeters, still it's almost without any side effects. But if it's more, we need to basically, again, redock. And then when we redock, so basically you need to probably to go to the other side, to the opposite side where you center in order that we slip right on the center if we are lucky. So this was the first generation. It was like a semi-automated guided centration. So now we are having, or we're gonna have a new feature where we just need to center somewhere around where we want to center and then the software will, out, will get our the perfect centration so again this is what i said uh, on the I, mean, I, would, I didn't talk about the scc angle scc control because this uh, happens fully automated if it's if the eye is not recognized so currently we are getting the scc of zero degrees so if you have a small astigmatism basically you can let it go if you we know if it's below 1.5 diopters of astigmatism there is not such a big impact but if, if you have if you treat astigmatism of three four or five diopters i would basically abort and redock again in order to get best cyclotorsion side compensation so this i explained so here you see again you need to ask the patient in this case to look a little bit down very gently movement you need what i stand uh, what i do in uh, with each patient i explain the treatment not during the surgery but just prior the surgery so people know what to expect and that they are prepared how to behave so this is the perfect centration in that case we apply vacuum and here uh, everything can slip down so what happens with centrax so for an optimum in centration and cycle rotation compensation uh, we should position the vertex perfectly so over here you see the error and what actually happens with the software. So if we have a decentered or if we don't have a centered excimer laser ablation, so what Schwinn does, so we have a so-called asymmetric uh, ablation profile. So it means that we don't start right from the center, but the profile is already moved to that, for example, offset of 0.2 millimeters and the center is somewhere else. So we are getting also a perfect centration. So this is not the case with smart sight. Over here in the smart sight, so just the lenticule, the full optical zone is shifted by the vector, which is defined by the distance and by the angle. Uh, and in that manner, we are basically decreasing the, uh, not the optical zone, but the transition zone and the transition zone gets smaller but we are getting the full optical zone. If the transition zone is too small, then it would be automatically also expanded to keep some of transition zone present. So this is the very simple explanation. So those are my data from, from centration, prior Centrax. So you see that 92% of my eyes are within 200 microns. So the maximum disintration is here, 200 microns and we have around 60 percent of eyes within 70 microns which is which means it's, it's a really excellent centration this is i'm talking about data without centrax and i hope we can present during next meetings uh, data with centrax 
astigmatic correction, so as you see over here, 89% of the results was within 0.25 diopters, 99% within half a diopter, and uh, we had only one eye more than uh, below 0.75 diopters. So excellent cyclotoshan compensation. There is also a paper published to this subject. Another big issue is a large diameter of flaps and lenticules. So let's start with flap. So when do we need large flaps? We need large flaps in hyperopic treatments. So I'm also a big fan of Zimmer. It's also a very nice laser. I don't want to say any, any bad word about this company. And when I have a big eye with big white to white, and when I treat hyperopia, so I'm using 10 millimeter ring, which gives me really a huge flap. The advantage here of ATOS laser is that we can also center the flap. So in fact, I was comparing 10 millimeter ring from Zimmer to maximum flap diameter of 9.6 in, uh, in ATOS. And I didn't find any difference because here you center, basically you can have the same centration of flap with same centration of the ablation. So perfect. My standard cap diameter currently is nine millimeters. Why do I choose that? Because if we want to retreat, in that case, we can use edge cut only. So we're basically just getting a perfect flap out of it. So here we're just using the old cap, decreasing it by 0.2 millimeters, and we're getting also a perfect flap in order if we need a retreatment. My standard optical zones are above 6.5. We can play with the thickness of the lenticle. So if we treat, for example, my smallest treatment is currently 0.75 diopters of myopia. In that case, I'm using optical zone of 8 millimeters, which is huge. So I can grab it and take it out, maybe sometimes with 0.25 or 0.5 uh, diopters of astigmatism. So the smaller the correction, the bigger the optical zone and also to spare the tissue on the other side on the other hand we can decrease the optical zone in order to spare tissue we can also uh, decrease the cap thickness we have a huge effective optical zone so we performed the study as we saw that uh, the effective optical zone in x lasers and also in uh, other manufacturers from, from uh, lenticular extraction it's also smaller than what we program and we wanted to have a look to analyze what is the effective optical zone com in comparison what is put uh, into the laser so for example if we put seven millimeters what do we have in reality so we performed the study. It was a program was developed by which can automatically analyze the data from MS39 comparison from pre to post op. And we found out through the multivariant regression, a formula. Uh, I don't want to go into details, but just that you memorize one thing, whatever we put into the laser, the effective optical zone is smaller by 6%, effective relative optical zone. So here on this graph, you see the more diopters we treat, the smaller gets the optical zone. And this is basically because we're getting a thicker lenticles because we need a bigger thickness. And once when we increase, when we treat higher, uh, higher myopia, we tend to rather decrease the optical zone to spare tissue. Another big feature, it's the low dose concept for minimal strain and better visual acuity. So I don't know if everyone is aware about dose because we are talking about energy. So energy, it doesn't mean dose. We can use energy of, for example, 90 nanojoule, and then it can be lower if we consider spacing and tracking. For example, if we compare it to 50 nanojoules and just have a look now, I mean, this is the formula of, uh, of dose energy multiplied by 100 divided by track distance multiplied by spot, uh, spot distance. And this gives a millijoule per square centimeter. So when you look over here, we can have a very high dose with energy of 50 nanojoule with track distance of two, spot distance of one, and low dose with energy of 90 with track distance of 4.7 and spot distance of three. So you just see that you have a much lower density of those small pulses or you have a higher density. And the lower the dose, the faster the visual rehabilitation. But of course, we like, I'm also a fan of low energy concept, but not too low. We need just the perfect dose in order to extract the lenticle so we have a visual acuity I would say superior there over than 0.8 or 1.0 uh, on day one and that laser everything is very custom uh, customizable so here you see how I can change even during the eyes the energy and this can be done for the anterior anterior cut or for the refractive cut posterior cut 
So you can see we can manipulate in 0.1 micron steps very easily. We can, I think, space distance varies from 2.0 up to 12 and track from 1.0 up to 6 microns. And also the pulse energy can be adjusted in those two planes independently. And of course, depending on the dose, we have a faster visual recovery. So you can see that uh, lower dose gives much faster recovery. Of course, every tissue is different. It's not like with a femtolasic that almost we don't feel any differences. Here we can have exactly same uh, dioptric values same age of patients for example people were living in the same area so with different also amount of sun which was in the region but still we can feel that the tissue is completely different so we can here also readjust from eye to eye in order that we can um, adjust the dose in order to get the best visual acuity uh, on day one the lenticle geometry is a little bit different compared to Zeiss I think in Zeiss, the uh, periphery has a certain thickness, I think minimal thickness of 15 or 20 microns. With Schwind laser, the periphery goes, the thickness of the periphery, periphery goes down to zero. And this can be a little bit tricky because you need to learn how to separate on the periphery because sometimes it's not that evident, it's not difficult, but it requires some learning some experience and then if you have performed some cases i mean i never had a single case where i couldn't extract the lenticle just a matter of thinking taking small break think again what you feel extract so again as i said with small diopters you just increase the optical zone we're getting a bigger a thicker lenticle and just be careful then we can start with one technique then you can modify your technique uh, i have a separate technique for thin lenticles different technique for thick lenticles but I never, again, I never had a single case where I couldn't extract this uh, smart side lenticle. Another advantage for the peripheral zero minimal thickness is the minimal epithelial regression. And we observe it, I mean, there is, there are some changes, but they are not big. I would say they are within 10 microns, even for, the, for, for higher diopters. Of course, there are some exceptions where you have a epithelial hyperplasia. And uh, what I observed is mostly uh, has to do with a smaller optical zone. We have also the advantage of uh, almost no induction of uh, spherical aberrations. I must say that I use always very large optical zones. Almost the minimal optical zone is 7.0 and I try to even to do 7.3, 7.5. 8 it's quite rare, but with 7.0 I would say it's, it's enough. And with these optical zones, up to six diopters of myopia, we didn't see almost zero induction of spherical aberration. Big advantage, less visual symptoms at night for patients. Uh, just excellent. Last feature, a PI, I must say, it was not like that from the very beginning. We had some issues with the PI. The PI recognition four, year, four years ago was a little bit poor. We had also some difficulties in uh, uh, building up the pressure, the vacuum, but this all changes over last years, I would say even over last months, and we have now one really very nice patient interface which works for all sizes of the cornea and for all treatments. So one PI for femtoflap, one PI for smart sites, and one PI very soon for uh, intercorneal rings. So this makes life very simple. So it's a curved patient interface, uh, reduced IOP increase due to low vacuum level, easy PI connection, just click and go. If you get it recognized first time, if not, you just need to take it out and uh, introduce it again. You have see an uh, integrated vacuum tubing and again what I said one size fits all eyes. The eye concept reducing the complexity of handling, logistics and storage. That's it. If you have any questions I'm more than happy to answer all of them. I would keep the same standard what we have now without this active tracking because this guarantees you best possible results that you're with and it don't even same thing on Amaris when you see that you know the eye is almost at the end of the hot zone so you would r basically grab your hands and get it right to the center to get the perfect centration of the ablation so over here i think it's the same rule the more precise you know we should consider centrix just as a i would say insurance that we get really the best the possible result out of it when you treat high myops 
you can grab the lenticle. So basically, uh, it's stiffer. When you have a lenticle of, for example, I would say 37 microns, 38 microns, if you separate one side, you, it can basically flip as a sandwich and you will have very hard time uh, in order to get it out, the other part. So what I'm doing, if you have a circle with, let's take it as a virtual lenticle over here. So what I'm doing, once when you're on the posterior plane, you take one edge and you make a tunnel and you don't separate, let's say, this because then you will have a sandwich which is difficult to take out but you go in and you go something you know around but you keep the lenticle attached to all the borders so you go inside you do this and once that you see that most of the lenticle the posterior plane is separated then you break further up what I'm doing and then to the side I go one more time to the side and this is getting it stays over here and you take it out with the same instrument. You don't, you, you don't even need the forceps. Very straightforward.